It was quite long enough. And further supplementaries, I move to question number three, Paul Goldsmith. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Uh, my question is to the Minister, Minister of Finance and asks, what progress is the government making in reaching its fiscal targets of returning to surplus in 2014-15 and reducing net government debt to 20% of GDP by 2020? Honourable Bill English. Speaker, uh, the government is on track to meet both of those targets. Budget forecasts show a surplus of 75 million in 2014-15 and net debt peaking at 28.7% of GDP in the same year before falling to 17.6% of GDP in 2021. Taking on more debt over the past few years has been appropriate to support our future economic growth and to cushion New Zealanders and their families from the worst effects of recession. But at the same time as taking on the debt, the government has laid out a path back to surplus and, a, furthermore, a path back to reducing government debt back to b levels that we believe are, are prudent. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Paul Goldsmith. Uh, to the Minister, why is it important that the government gets back to surplus and start repaying debt? Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, uh, while the level of government debt is well below that of many other governments uh, that we compare ourselves with, uh, it's important we keep government debt low in order to offset very high household debt and to ensure that we can manage through another recession. Net government debt is still rising uh, today by around $130 million a week and will reach $70 billion in 2016-17 up from around $10 billion just five years ago. Uh, that's the equivalent of around $15,000 for each and every New Zealander. We simply believe uh, that it would be prudent to return government debt uh, to, the, to uh, lower levels uh, so that we're better able to uh, reduce the pressure on interest rates rising sooner than they otherwise would and reduce pressure on an exchange rate uh, that is already higher than is comfortable for us. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Paul Goldsmith. Uh, to the Minister, what recent reports has the Minister received on government finances? Honourable Bill English. Mr. Speaker, the Treasury today issued the government financial statements for the 10 months to the 30th of April, uh, that it shows that a stronger economy and uh, tax reforms uh, of 2010 are, un are underpinning uh, more tax revenue. Combined with the government's responsible control over expenditure, uh, this has restricted the deficit to less than $4 billion for the 10 months, which is $600 million less than was forecast in the budget just a few yeah. weeks ago. Tax revenue is around $3.1 billion higher uh, than the corresponding period last year. This is one of a number of indicators that New Zealanders have some well-earned confidence and optimism about the future. Supplementary question, Paul Goldsmith. Uh, to the minister, uh, to the minister, what are some of the risks to the government's improving finances and the brighter outlook for the economy? Ah. Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr. Speaker, there are some risks in the global economy. Europe still has uh, deep-seated and long-term debt problems and productivity problems. Uh, the US economy looks to be recovering, but it's unclear just how robust that is. And both, uh, both uh, uh, China uh, faces risks of lower growth and problems with excessive credit. And in Australia, there seems to be a sharper than expected downturn in mining investment, which could lead to Australia uh, having lower growth rates over the next couple of years than in New Zealand. Uh, so there are global risks and also domestic risks if the government doesn't stay on track with this moderate, uh, consistent and long-term economic policy. Supplementary. Honourable David Parker. Supplementary. Does he agree that his claims to fiscal responsibility are undermined by his refusal to address the superannuation entitlement age well in advance so people have time to prepare, given that costs of super have increased by $3 billion from $7 billion to $10 billion per annum in the last five years, and in just two years' time, the cost of New Zealand super to the taxpayer will be more than the entire cost of preschool, primary, intermediate and secondary education. 
Honourable Bill uh, English. Mr Speaker, no, I don't agree. And of course, uh, no one is proposing changing the age of eligibility in a way that will affect the costs of super over the next two years. Uh, the government has been so busy dealing with the large and rising cost of law and order and welfare, which got out of control under, out of control under the previous government. And fortunately, we are having some success in bringing those long-term costs under control. Supplementary question, the Honourable David Parker. Well, then, if the Minister doesn't agree with the Labour Party, does he agree with Gareth Kiernan of Infometrics, who said, quotes, if he is genuinely interested in what's good for the future of the country, quotes, and his decision-making is not dominated by his own ego, he would recognise his mistake about the retirement age and stand down. If not, why not? Honourable Bill English. Uh, yes, I do disagree with him. Uh, the government made some very clear undertakings, and I know it's not the style of the opposition parties, but we said we wouldn't change it, uh, the age, and we won't. Uh, at the same time, as I pointed out to the member before, there are other, there are other long-term costs where uh, the failures of the previous government meant that they've got out of control, particularly welfare and law and order, and the government is... The government is implementing a range of innovative and, in some cases, world-leading policies to bring those costs under control. That, of course, will help our ability to meet superannuation obligations in the future. Question number four, Right Honourable Winston Peters. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. This question is to the Prime Minister.